Put your hands together for the Lord. Put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. What a blessing. That same anointing is going to give you your own breakthrough. Amen. That same stadium filling anointing is going to bless your business. Amen. Your amen is very light. Pa. This stadium, a lot of programs happen here. It's not easy to, easy to fill it like that. Whether Ghana versus Nigeria or I don't know. It's not easy to fill it. But God gave and, and I was telling prophets when we were sitting on stage that I remember I mean I, he himself said he was saying to me that fulfillment of dreams fulfillment of dreams. Then I said one day we shall meet in a stadium. It has actually come to pass. Clap for Jesus. That's why I say that one day you will also drive a car. One day they will stop pushing your car. You will never have a car that... And one day you will stop calling mechanics to come and give you starter and change your brakes and change your this because you have also have a tear rubber car. One day you will also get married. One day, one. Those who are not married are not shouting the amen. You see, those who are rather married are shouting the amen. Hey! Wow. What a blessing. So we thank God for this great fulfillment of prophecy that confirms to me. I was there when it was just one church in a small place. And then prophets will say, how many believe that one day we shall meet in a stadium? And it has come to pass, practically, the church. So, let us pray. Father, thanks a million for this blessing. The blessing of serving you, of knowing you. The greatest thing in all our lives is to know you, is to serve you, to be called your own. This morning, we ask you to open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of your law. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Resurrection Power is the title of our message this morning. Resurrection Power. Jesus Christ, number one, Jesus Christ demonstrated resurrection power by raising Jairus' daughter from the dead. In Mark chapter 5, where he begins on his journey to delivering the madman of Gadara and delivering him from all the 6,000 demons that had filled him. When he left, a man came to see him called Jairus. And he said that, And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue. Verse 22. Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter, lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, and she may be healed. And she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. While he was on the way, then came the woman who had the issue of blood for 12 years, tied the hem of So he interrupted his journey to Jairus' house. <laughs> and that episode brought that whole beautiful encounter with the woman with the issue of blood. But he continued on the journey. The Bible says, while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the, the, the master any further? So sometimes you can have a condition, it's almost dead, but it's not yet dead. 
and then it gets to the final place where it is dead. But once something is not dead, or even if it is dead, there's resurrection power. So the Bible says, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. Tell somebody, be not afraid, only believe. We like being afraid of things. When the issues of life confront us, instead of believing, we are full of fear. Full of fear. And I want to tell you as a believer that you need to. That's why this year we spent a lot of time preaching about faith. Helping you to develop your believing thermometer must rise, must go up. Your believing thermometer. Like it must be higher and higher all the time. It must not be going down. But normally you find many Christians have become unbelievers in the church. They don't really believe in the God that they, some people just like coming to church just for, it's like, it's also a nice thing to come to church. Ghana's tradition, Sunday, many of you say, it's like after Sunday, there's no more church. But following God, serving God is about believing, believing. And Jesus said to the man, even though your daughter is dead, only believe. Only believe. I know that you don't have, you are not yet married. And you, are, you look, oh, you are getting older. And the pressure is on from family and friends. Do you see? But fear not. Only believe. Can I tell you that? Fear not. Only believe. Only believe. I, I know that maybe you've not had a child and it's been something that has been troubling you, but fear not. Only believe. Amen. I always remember my friend Domwen telling the story how Domwen who made the I just want to be where you are, that man. He made that story and he, he, he gave a story of his life. He said he and his wife had been married, I think, for 12 years or 15 years, 12 years, and they had not had a child. He was going on crusade grounds, up and down, singing at crusades, singing in churches, composing songs. He was married 12 years. They were working. There was nothing. But after 12 years came the first issue. And he had five children in five years. Yes. <laughs> ah, tell somebody it's never too late with God. So Jesus was telling the man, because the people said it legitimately that, look, you came to tell the man that your daughter is not is at the point of death. Now the death has happened. So why are you worrying the man? Because everybody feels that once something is dead or someone is dead, that's the finality. But Jesus said, fear not. Only believe. I know they are telling you that it's too late. But fear not, only believe. That is resurrection power speaking. And he suffered no man to follow him, um, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. Sometimes when you are, even sometimes when we are at construction sites, we don't want people to follow us. Because when you follow us, you don't have the thought of tenacity and confidence and boldness and a certain understanding that we have. Maybe you may think we are not Christians. When we are on construction site. But you will not understand how a bishop can be screaming at this type of masons and workers and shouting at them and throwing saucepans, uh, headpans away and shovels away. And you say, ah, man of God, pa, now you have a like, you are not. <laughs> That's a man of God. Hey, bishop, hey, bishop. Hey, when you are with him on construction, it's not easy at all. One day, I, will, I always remember just where this uh, stand is. I was standing there and all, I gathered all the workers on site. It was two weeks to the great move. Hey! The whole place was basa, And we had only two weeks. I stood here and I told the people that we are finishing and we are coming here in two weeks. If they think I'm joking, they should be careful. But that's 
Whatever I've given them to finish, if they don't finish, I will lift my hands up to heaven eh, and I will cry from my heart to God and curse them and curse their wives and curse their parents and curse their children. I've not cursed them yet, but I was announcing that it was going to cap. <laughs> yes, that I will curse all your children and your children's children. I will curse them and I will speak from my heart. God will hear me. God will hear me. <laughs> Hey, they finished. The man who was doing the ceiling, hey, he, he did it, he removed. He said, we'll finish in two weeks. Hey, one month had come. He was still, he was now restarting because the calculation is wrong. Then they'll do, uh, when they get here, it doesn't meet. Then they have to remove the whole thing. Hey, it was wild though. And I said, hey, you said two weeks. Now it's about six weeks you have not finished. If you don't finish, I will Cry to God from my heart. I'll curse you, you. I'll curse you. I'll pray from my heart and talk to God. I'll curse you from my heart. Now, there's a time when a Nibraba, there's uh, eyes are, as I read. Uh, it's not easy to, whatever. Oh, two weeks and everybody came here. They didn't know what had happened. As we were standing here coolly and they said, oh, great move, great move. And they were very happy. They didn't know. When Bishop Dad got here, he got out of his car. Then he said, where? So more year four, eh? I, I was jumping because of what he said. The church is very nice. That's what he said. Church is very nice. Hey! But, I mean, this one is just a little aside. It's not what I'm preaching about. It's that Jesus didn't allow anybody to. So sometimes when you're going to say, don't follow me, it doesn't mean you don't like you. Do you understand? Because you shouldn't come. And you shouldn't even want. Sometimes you shouldn't come. Some, you yourself shouldn't want to go till you are invited. Because then maybe when you see, you won't be normal. The way you are, when you see some things, you, you will not be okay. You see us eating certain chickens and chewing certain things, you may not be okay. You may not read your Bible again. Say, hey, Bishop. Oh, I didn't know Bishop. Bishop, Big Daddy can eat like that. I didn't know that. What? Ah, he likes, then you say, oh, he likes, um, what do they call that face the wall? What do they call it in English? How is it said in English? That's the name of Kokonte. Yeah. I didn't know that he likes Kokonte. Hey, Obinyane Kesiakwa. No. Then you start describing that. Where? When the, you see the man fat like that, it's not easy. When he's eating, it's like an elephant is eating. Oh, you have become something has happened to your mind. Uh-huh. So there are some things, don't follow. Yes. And sometimes to your level of faith, it's not as a, at a certain height. So when you follow a man of God, you may go and quench his spirit. Your fears, your crying, your hysteria will just affect his faith. So stay behind. Don't come. Don't come. Don't come. Don't be angry. Don't be angry. If there's a meeting they don't call you, be humble and just be where you are till they call you. Sometimes it's for your good. You shouldn't be there to hear some things or see some things. Just a little advice on resurrection morning. Now, and when he was coming, verse 39, he said unto them, Okay, and he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and see the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was coming, he said unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? And the damsel is not dead, but she sleepeth. And they laughed. The people were crying. They started laughing. <laughs> God will turn your laughter into your morning into laughter. You will not be crying all the time. <laughs> when you meet Jesus, you will laugh again. I said you will laugh again. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entereth in where the damsel was lying, and he took the damsel by the hand, and said unto her, Talita kumi, Mm. which being interpreted is, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, and she was of the age of 12 years, the woman of the issue of blood had 12 years, and this girl was also 12 years. Hey, Jesus, you are powerful. And they were astonished with a great astonishment. 
And he charged them straightway that no man should know it and commanded that something should be given to her to eat. Hallelujah. So this one, she had just died and Jesus' resurrection power entered into her life and brought her back to life. May God bring things that are dead in your life back to life. Amen. Number two, Jesus demonstrated resurrection power by stopping a funeral procession that was on its way to the burial grounds and raising the dead person. So this one, she just died. So somebody will say, ah, maybe she didn't really die. So now, to demonstrate that it's, not, it's no fluke, It's not just some flashes of brilliance. <laughs> or it's like you just, the girl was not really dead. And then you just went and said, Talita Kumi, then she woke up. She was, and you cry, you said she was asleep. So this time, a woman who was married, her husband had died and her only boy had also died. And I don't know for how long, but at least, let's say 24 hours, because in, in, even in Ghana, if your child dies, I think they don't allow you to keep the body for a long time. Within a few, a day or two, sometimes if there is a very young child, they bury the child that day, like a baby. They bury the child that same day that the baby dies, or just the next day. So even, let's say, if the boy was just a young boy, maybe two days or one day, in those days too, Far east, they don't keep bodies for such a long time. It's Africa that you keep somebody for one year, two years, three years, sometimes even seven years. They are now coming to bury the person who died seven years ago. He has been in the fridge. Ah. Or sometimes the person has been, been buried. They are now coming to do the funeral as though he died yesterday after 20 years. Yes. Hey, and do the funeral for two weeks. Huh? 14 days of burial, uh, funeral. Anyway. Me, mommy, there, my symbol arrives. If somebody dies, you shouldn't keep too long. Eh? It's not necessary. It's so wasting of money and time. Anyway. It's up to you. But my advice, you can take it or leave it. So Jesus now is going and meets them on the way. And the Bible says the woman was crying. When he saw the way the woman was crying, and I'm sure they must have whispered to him her condition and her state and how this is the only child, and the thing was more to Jesus. Do you see? So the Bible says, I'm, I'm on, uh, we are going to the city of Nain. In Luke 7, it came to pass that the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, weep not. Oh, Jesus, we love you. Weep not. Jesus is telling everybody here, weep not. Jesus doesn't want you to be so sad all the time, so weep not. Then he says, and he came and touched the bear. And they that bear him stood still. And he said, young man, <laughs> I say unto thee, arise. And he that was dead sat up. What is a bear? Is it, it's not a coffin. It's like a kind of carrier. Something that the, some people have, because the way the guy stood up, if it was a coffin, I don't know how he would have stood up. But the beer, the Bible says that the man stood and then he said, young man, I say unto thee, arise. I don't know for how long you have been dead for, but I came to tell you that it doesn't have to be just when you die. But even if you have been dead for some time, I can bring you back to life. Resurrection power is working. And the boy stood up and sat and began to speak. And he delivered her, him to his mother. What a blessing. I said, what a blessing. So Jesus demonstrated resurrection power 
by raising a, a man who has been dead and they are on their way to the burial, to the cemetery to put him in the grave. And he raised him from the dead. So now this time, it's not that he just died. He has, been died, for, he has died for some time, but he, rose, he raised him from the dead. Number three, Christ demonstrated resurrection power by raising a decomposing, stinking Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus had been uh, dead for four days. John eleven thirty nine. 39, Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Wow. By this time he stinketh, because he has been dead four days. Verse 14. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou should, wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Then they, then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he does had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. That's why we believe in Jesus. We believe in Jesus because he has resurrection power. May you believe in Jesus. Every Sunday after Good Friday, we remind ourselves that we are following a savior who is alive. We are following, I serve a risen savior. I serve a risen savior. I serve a risen savior. On resurrection morning, Sunday, we, are, we wear white to tell ourselves and to assure ourselves that our Savior is not a dead Savior. He's a living Savior. He's alive. I said he's alive. He's not dead. He's not dead. He's alive. When you go to Israel, People don't like to go to Israel. So I will be there. No, yeah, it's like I've waited for I'll be there, but it's like you don't say such things. Okay, no problem. Second service, I get people to say they will be there. No problem. I've been there. <laughs> when you go to Israel, there are cemeteries there also. And there are graves for some of their noble sons. Yishak Rabin and all those people who were murdered and heads of state. And all that. You can go there. They, will, they can take you there. The tour guide can take you to visit their grave. Yes. And you see it's sealed. But during the tour, you also be taken to a, a, a place. And when you go there, they say that's where Jesus was laid. They have two places. But whichever way, whether here or there, the story is the same. And when you go to the place, you see it open. And people go in and come, go in and come, go in and come, go in and come because there's nobody there. But the other statesmen, their graves are covered because their bones are kept in there still. But the grave of Jesus or his tomb is empty. Historically proclaimed empty and confirmed empty because Jesus is still alive. He is the resurrection Jesus resurrection power in him he is still the same yesterday today and forever so that's a very important revelation you must keep in your heart jesus is still alive tell somebody i serve a risen savior number four my points are seven when i finish i'll finish resurrection power is the greatest power that any man can ever have because it combines three types of power. 
Number one, when Jesus raises somebody from the dead, okay, it means that he has been able to call the spirit of the dead man from the place of the dead. Lazarus, come forth. Because we know that to be even absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. As soon as you die, your spirit disappears and goes to a different place. Lazarus died, the Lazarus, poor Lazarus, not this one, another Lazarus, he died and was carried by angels to Abraham's bosom immediately. The rich man died who was godless and he was, he was found in hell. So when you die, your spirit goes to one of two destinations. One is called Abraham's bosom, the other is called hell or I think Hades. Yes, that's where you are kept the bad dead people are kept in Hades, the place of the dead. And you are there till the, the Bible says that death and hell gave up the dead in them and they were judged according to all that was written in the books. So you will see that death that we call death is also there and it can also be brought back. And hell can also be brought, people who are in hell can be brought back to face another judgment. Then there's another hell, which is called the second hell. It's called second death. That one is a lake that burns with fire and brimstone. When, when you, the dead who are dead, who are resurrected, either from Abraham's bosom or from this place called Hades or hell, that those people are put inside the lake of fire and then they die, they will be it's like a prison that you are quarantined forever and ever. Yes. That's why you have to escape. When you, die, you shouldn't just be interested in dying once. When you are born once, you die twice. When you are born twice, you die once. Your first birth is biological birth. Second birth is born again birth. The, some of us have only biological birth, I, I was born. My date of birth is this. You don't have any date of birth for your spiritual life. You don't have any date that you were born again. Jesus said, except you are born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. You can't. You need a second birth. So Nicodemus asked Jesus that, can I enter back into my mother's womb and be born? You see, this is, the born again is not born again churches that brought it to. It's in the Bible. Born again is a term in the Bible that Jesus himself brought up. He said, except a man be born again, he cannot enter. So born again is not charismatic churches that we popularized it in a sense because we believe it. And we believe it more and actively so. And to be born again, you have to give your life to Jesus, open your heart to him and make him the Lord of your life. That's how you get born again. Are you there still? So if you are born once, like my date of birth is 1st January uh, 1963, and that's my, my date of birth. But it doesn't mean that, I, I, for me, I have another date of birth. It's in September 1976. That's my second birth. I was born again in September 1976. I remember that. I went to secondary school from one, and then I gave my life to Christ seriously from that time, and I changed from that day. So I have two birth, birth certificates. One is physical, that I use for passport. The other one is spiritual. Only God knows and understands that one. Are you listening to me? So when you are born once, you see, then you are not born, you never get born again and you die. You go straight to hell and you'll be waiting for the final judgment, the place of final sentence, the bima. And when you go there, they will judge you from things written in books. And they will tell you, it, it will be like a video. They will play your life. You will say that, me, I'm not a bad person. I never killed anyone. I never told a lie. I never this. And they will play, hey, you will be shocked. The date and everything is recorded. They will play everything. You will see everything. And then you will know, you, will be, you yourself will say that, okay, please. As, as they are reading your problems and you are seeing your video of your life, you will just be going towards the place where you, you, you yourself will condemn yourself. You just go there. But when you are alive, you have a chance to escape this place that is called hell. Oh, yes. So, everybody here must believe in resurrection because 
Resurrection power. When Jesus resurrects you, you will resurrect. You will come back to life. You will live again. You will not die. You will not just disappear into thin air like we are just some air that, some smoke that we just disappeared. You won't disappear like that. You will live again. Amen. You will live again. Amen. And that's why talking about Jesus' resurrection power is very crucial because it's very important for all of us. So number four, Resurrection power is the greatest power because it combines three types of power. So when Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come forth, he was calling his spirit from Abraham's bosom. Where that Lazarus went to, this Lazarus too must have also been there because he was a good person. And Jesus called the spirit from us like, if you are in Abraham's bosom, eh, they can call your name and Abraham will say that, please go back. Somebody is calling you and I can't keep you here. <laughs> I think Yongi Cho gave a story of somebody who uh, died and then the pastor was praying that he should come back. And, then, and, then, ah, and the man was at a, he saw a nice place. He was in heaven. The place was glorious. And then when Jesus told him that you have to go back, he said, why? He said, because your pastor is interceding strongly and I need to respond to him positively. He said, no, he can't do that. <laughs> no, he can't do that. Because the man was at a nice place, was thinking of coming back to this world to come and meet fewer prices, come and meet politicians, come and meet haircut, come and meet all this death of the queen, Ukraine war, and all this doom so, doom so, doom so. Ah, no, 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 he told God, no, he can't do that. He can't do that. He cannot do that. Why? He should leave me to be here. He says, no. Because when he saw the way the man's wife and children, people were crying, he said, no, 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 no. Father, call him back. So resurrection power is very powerful. It's like wherever you are in the spirit realm, they are calling you to return. It's too wild. Even when you are at the gate, I can't, all right. Philip! It's like, somebody has to run hey Philip, Philip, Bishop is calling you <laughs> but for Jesus he stood here on this earth he stood at the grave of Lazarus and he screamed Lazarus, come forth wherever you are his voice broke through the spirit realm and entered into Abraham's bosom and said Abraham, I know you are comforted the Bible says that he was comforted he said, you are comforting him, but I need him back on earth. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I see the way Mary and Martha are crying and all the people are weeping, I can't stand it. He's also my friend. Please release him for a few more years. Because last was died again. They didn't record that one. But this one there, he said, you are, not, you are not staying there. Come back here. Come back. I want to tell you something here. That whatever in your life seems to be so far-fetched, so extreme, Nothing can make it work. Believe in Jesus. Oh, look, there's a resurrection power. It can call back anything that is dying, dead, that is far, far fetched, very remote. It's like nobody can even imagine that it can come from there. 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 It will come from there. They may, they may have tied your womb inside some tree in your village. But I stand here to decree, womb come alive. And wherever they have tied it, it will come, it will come from there. Number two, resurrection power deals with the sickness that killed the person. Yes. So what it is is that when he, Lazarus comes forth, or daughter says to you, or son arise, it means that. It also heals the sicknesses that, or the sickness or disease that killed the man. But otherwise, when you resurrect and you sit up, you will die again because the sickness is still in your body. So resurrection power deals with any kind of sickness, whether you died even by accident, your heart, you bled, all your blood left your body, whatever it is, it just re reworks everything, recreates everything and puts you back in shape. Oh yes. Healing is possible. If dead people can be healed, then the living can also be healed. Believe in healing. Believe in resurrection power. 
on Resurrection Sunday, believe that there is power to heal you. No, you are even alive. You are not dead. You are alive. Believe in healing. Catherine Kuhlman said, once you are part of humanity, you will need a miracle one day. Once you are part of, how many are part of humanity? How many are human beings? You will need a miracle. Tell your neighbor you need a miracle. Believe in resurrection power. Believe in the resurrection power. Yeah. And number three, the resurrection power is powerful because it can, it, it, it recomposes decomposed bodies. Yes. You know, like meat. Have you been in a home where maybe like meat fell behind some table or something and we couldn't bring it up? Later, I realized the whole place is, oh, let's say a rat has died. You put rat poison somewhere, you forgot about it. The rat, it died. And you will know that it has died because it won't scream. They don't shout when they are dying. They don't say anything. They they don't call for help. They just die. Then after some time, you you, you smell, ah, how about, oh, uh, this place is smelling. Eh? What is it? First you suspect somebody. Then you realize that no. This is beyond. Beyond. Because since you left, the thing is still here. It's like, ah. It seems to be coming from this direction. Then when you open, you push the drawer, you see that there. You see a dead rat. It, it has decomposed. That's why Martha said that by this time... He is thinketh. It means that because the, the body is now meat. Ah, air pro. Ah, is is thinking. It's decomposed. The decomposition makes it a say. You see, when your skin gets spoiled, it's like a pro. It, it, it's like even they have to cut it off. Like those who are diabetic, when they have a, a kind of sore that doesn't heal, at a point they have to remove that section of the body so that you can save the rest. Because it's decomposed. It's spoiled. Air proper. It's trying to rise to the rest of your leg. They have to take it off at a place which can heal and then secure your, the rest of your life. But when resurrection power enters, eh, what happens is that Adiana air prono, the thing that is decomposing, he reverses the process of decomposition and makes the thing that was proying and destroyed and decomposed because even meat when it's spoiled you can't even boil it I mean can you boil it and eat it back let's say if it's rotten and it's smelling is it not possible to boil maybe boil it out for maybe four or five hours and remove all the <laughs> eh? you can't why it's spoiled it's beyond repair it's beyond use but when resurrection power entered Lazarus' body, what was decomposed? Because Jesus demonstrated that even if you are dead for four days, four days, four days, that the day one has come, maybe you are not, then maggots will start appearing in the person's decomposed body. Flies! will settle on their body and start enjoying. But Jesus said, come forth. I don't care if you have decomposed for four days. I don't care whether it's so useless that man doesn't think that anything can come out of it. I decree Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came out. The Bible says he was bound hand and feet. So he couldn't walk. I'm sure he was jumping like this. He was jumping, jumping. And Jesus said, lose him and let him go. Lose him and let him go. I want to prophesy to you that whatever is dead in your life, even if it is a marriage, even if it is a business, it is coming back to life. Receive resurrection power. Receive resurrection power upon your marriage, upon your business, upon your life. What about your organs? Sometimes there are organs in your body. Doctor will say, my friend, this one there is finished. This one kidney, only one can work. Your testicles, only one can work. Hey! Your eyes, only one can work. Are you listening to me? 
Your liver is getting spoiled. This one is getting spoiled. When doctors start pronouncing certain organs finished, it means that's the end of your life. That's the end. But today we are glad. We are glad that there is a power. There is a power that can enter into whatever is decomposing that is getting spoiled and bring it back to life. Receive life for your life. Receive life for your life. Receive life for your life. Whatever is dying, let it come back to life. Whatever is dying, let it come back to life. What about your brain? There are children you have. They don't seem that they can think. We were here when Reverend Steve Mensah gave a testimony of his son. Born virtually brain dead. Brain useless. Teachers had given up on him. Boy is playing with a, a, an aeroplane toy and he says, this aeroplane, I would like to fly one. Left it and it fell. Told the daddy, I want to be a pilot. Daddy himself said to him, he said, hey, my boy, it's a good uh, vision, but the way your, your brain works and the way you were born a bit deformed, you are not going to be able to do this. But he didn't say anything to the boy. The boy kept saying, I'm going to be a pilot. I'm going to be a pilot. Yeah, he was always last in class. Last but one or last. Yes. If he beats one person, it's like he has done very well. Hey! The teachers came to him to uh, encourage him that, look, your boy has a vision to be a pilot. Please, try and discourage him to choose maybe Bolaman or Carpenter or something that doesn't need a lot of brain power. Three teachers who came together to his office, please. We've been talking to your son. We tell all the children, what will you, somebody say, I'd like to be a doctor. You know, they have something, they, career day, career day. So they dress how they want to become. So this boy there, he doesn't dress like a doctor. He doesn't dress like a carpenter. He doesn't dress like a mason. He doesn't dress, he wants to be a pilot. That's his vision. Meanwhile, he's always last in class. When the teachers finished, I said, are you mocking me or something? Because I know my son's condition. Why are you coming to emphasize it to me? He said, when the teachers left, three teachers left his office, something entered him. I believe it was the Holy Spirit. And he said, with God, all things are possible. This, my boy, will be the pilot that he wants, he wants to become. So he he called the wife immediately. Honey, where's our boy? She said, he's in the house. He said, hey, wait for me, I'm coming there. Took his horn of oil, bottle of oil, and went to the house. He said, today, I've come to pray over you. So to you to know that all things are possible. It's time for the church to believe that things are possible. Because if this Jesus is the same Jesus we are following, eh, if this Jesus is the same Jesus we are following, then we are doing something wrong. The way we have made our heads and our minds work, we are doing something wrong. He laid hands on the boy. He flew through the sitting room chairs. Bring him back. Laid hands on him. He was crying. The boy was crying. He said, bring him back. He laid hands on him several times. And then he left. A few months after, the boy who was last but one, last, last but one, last, last, last but one, last, last but one, last, last but one, was now 25, 24, 23. Out of 52 people, he has come forward. He has moved from the back and he's coming forward. Something was, has, the, the decomposition is being recreated. A power was reworking. Believe in it. Believe, 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 believe in it. There are people when you tell them that things are going to work, they say, hmm, Bishop, maybe you don't know my condition. My condition is different. Mine is four days too late. It's decomposed. A pro, a say. One day I was leading a fellowship. A dear lady was in the fellowship. She had a husband who had gone to Germany 
intending to organize for her to come. But you know how it is. Years had come and gone, more than 10 years. He, she was not hearing from him. It's like a pro, a say, the relationship is Paul. But in the, in the, uh, on the porch, as she was narrating this, was a little fellowship. I, we just decided to pray and then we decreed, Father, the heart of a king is in the hand of the Lord. And the Lord can turn any heart whichever way he wants it to go. Therefore, turn this man's heart in her favor. Both were unbelievers when he left. She had become born again, very on fire for the Lord. Within a few months, she heard from the man. You see, those days there were no emails, text messages and those things. So you, everything is international call, IDD. She heard from the man. I'm so sorry. I apologize. I don't know what came over me. I, something, something, something. I don't know why. I, in fact, I'm so sorry, but you know, I'm coming back. 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 Hey, the man had now, the relationship had now received life. He had come. He came back to Ghana. He came back to settle in Ghana. And, rem and remarried the woman. Yes. And got born again and became more on fire than the woman. Wow. And sometimes when he's going for all night, she says, Nadia, darling, mean to me, my bread. The man was going for all night. The, this woman who got born again first was now pray, who prayed for his salvation and, and return is now begging that Nadia, I can't go for all night. Because when resurrection power enters your situation, it can change the composition into living things. Somebody's marriage is coming alive. Somebody's business is coming alive. Somebody's child is receiving resurrection power. His brain is being reorganized. The wires are being reorganized. God's power is entering into that boy, into that girl, changing him into a first class student. Believe in it all. I can't stop telling the story of this, my lady pastor's daughter. Going to a school to do O level without extra teachers, extra classes with special teachers for each subject. Because good students, even good students, they need specialized, this type of Rabonzi type of la, 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 la La Glaja, this type of people who are very good in their field. Yeah. But when you are in secondary school, there are Mr. Pepra for chemistry and this type of wow, wow. When they teach you, you pass. I mean, you are not doing well in school because sometimes the people who are teaching you, they don't know how to teach. Everybody's brain can do muscle. You'll be shocked if you meet a certain teacher. You'll be surprised that you're a science student. Yeah. If you meet a certain type of teacher, a lecturer, you will be surprised that you are actually a science student who hates maths, who hates science, who doesn't like chemistry, who wants, it's like, hey, they should put me in business. I prefer the business. General arts. Not knowing that you are a science student, you are a doctor in the making, but the teacher you have met has made you hate mathematics, hate even French. Some of you could have been speaking French, but... <laughs> Because of the teacher you met. Uh, <laughs> they say they will use French to teach French. As they are teaching, you can't understand. And still they are using French to teach French. And you will not smile. And knocking your head all the time. Eh? Then they say, read the Pierre they do. Read it. You say, ah, I can't see anything. They'll be knocking your head. From that day, you don't want to go to the class again. Music. Some of you would have been classical pianists. Good musicians. But you go and meet a teacher who makes you, when they come, you know, semi demi quiver, uh, so uh, that's a so fortissimo, andante, this type of, I said, what are all these things? Eh? Andante. 
40 simu, piani simu. <laughs> when you hear this, you don't want to even see the subject because of the person who is teaching you. But thank God for resurrection power. Oh, yes. And this lady's daughter, we prayed. I, I don't even remember that I had prayed over oil. But she took it seriously because the prophecy you believe is the prophecy that will happen in your life. And every morning, she will anoint them before they go for classes. Take them to school. Same bottle of oil. Small, small, small. A precious bottle. You don't pour it and finish it. Uh, till, for how many years was it? How many months? How many years? Up till today, she's still doing it. When it finishes, you just bring and anoint. Uh, I pray over and then you continue. Without extra teachers and extra maths teachers and everything. Alone learning in the house. And she too, she's very busy in the church. Always in the church. Weekday service, weekday service. Come early, come late. She's the service manager. Yes. She has to organize who is doing this, who is there and coordinating things and everything. So she's always in the service. She has to be there. She has to. <laughs> Sometimes she'll be worried. It's like, yeah, my children. They are in the, I mean, it's like they have to do homework. So they have to do this. They have to, yeah, they have IA or some kind of exam. This and that. But it's like still you'll be in the church. Still you'll be serving God. Still you'll be doing God's work. Following people who don't want to serve God. Choristers who don't want to pay for uniform. Hey, choristers, very stubborn, plenty girls, stubborn and, and disrespectful ones. You will see them in the church. She has to be on them. Hey, help me, help me. You're always shouting at us. They are shouting at me. Why shouldn't she? The way you are, if they don't shout, nothing will work. <laughs> You have got the uniform. You've worn it. You even take it to town. You have not paid. <laughs> you take it to work. You have not paid. And it's not expensive too. You owe about maybe 33 or 35 CDs. You are always buying data. You are always topping up your units. Everything. And still you will not pay for the uniform. You shouldn't shout. You should just be there and be smiling at you. Oh, she will shout. Ah. And yet, when the daughter went for O level... Eight subjects she did. Each one of them was A star, A star, A star, A star, A star. That means that A star, your marks are between 90 and 100. 90 and 100 for every exam, O level. Very wild. Because resurrection power can bring to life whatever is dying. When they pray for you, you may think that, oh, they just prayed, I mean, nothing because of your faith because you don't really believe but the one who believes all things are possible to him that believe it and I don't have money for rent I don't know what should I do what should I do every day I should come to church I should come to church I should come to church well, huh? will you pay my rent for me you see you are quarreling over things you shouldn't quarrel over trust in the Lord God's resurrection power can enter your life. You will never struggle to pay your rent from that day. Somebody will build a house. He will not live in it himself. Oh. He will say, oh, I'm looking for somebody to look after my house. Please, do you have anybody who can stay? Say, oh, I have a brother cry. He's, uh, he's struggling to pay his rent. Oh, hey, well, does he go? He can be there. He can go to work and come, do everything, at least just to keep the house, close the door, make sure that the dust is whatever, and so on. So you will see that you have not bought a house. You have not built a house. But resurrection power has made a house available that you are sleeping in. You will sleep in a house you never built, you will drive a car you never bought. You will travel to places you never bought a ticket. You don't believe inside things. Eh? You just, everything you want to sweat ah, and get, then you tell yourself that, ah, my own power and might has gotten me this thing. No, 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 no. Jai, 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 jai. What you wear, you won't even buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you drive, you will never pay for. Where you live, you will never pay for it because resurrection power makes things available. Clap for Jesus. 
Somebody is blessed. Number five, Jesus Christ demonstrated resurrection power by fearlessly giving up his life on the cross and promising to rise from the dead after three days. He demonstrated resurrection power. Yes. John 10, 17, he says, Therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. So Jesus demonstrated resurrection power by fearlessly giving up his life. He says, I'm going to lay it down. Nobody's going to take it from me. That's my Jesus. That is my Jesus. Number six, Jesus Christ demonstrated resurrection power by actually rising from the dead after three days. <laughs> he actually rose. He didn't just talk, 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 talk. It's not about talk. It's not about talking. He actually rose on the third day. He came back to life. Yes. That's my Jesus. That is our Jesus. He rose again from the dead. Yes. He rose again. That's why we believe in him. That's why I'm following Jesus. I'm following somebody who is alive. One day my friend's wife died. And I had a dream. And in the dream, I was sitting in a car that was taking her to the mug. And he was behind. And she was sort of slouched in the back seat. But while she was with her at the back, he was kissing her. He was smooching her. He was very intimate with her. So I said, ah, but why are you so intimate with somebody who is dead? Why are you so intimate with somebody who is dead? Because we know that when somebody dies, you can't be intimate with a person who is dead. One day a pastor, one of a young, one of the first deaths we saw, young pastor, 27 years old, he died. And his widow, very nice. You know, there are some people, when they die, you can see that the, the, the person who is left will be very broken because when he was alive, their marriage was very nice. Like, you know, there are some marriages we, we, we all know. There are some people who are here, when we see them and their spouses, do you see? We, we know that they are enjoying. Do you see? They are always happy. They are, and there are some other ones too there. You can see that cat and mouse. Tom and Jerry. <laughs> hey! Every day somebody has done something. And da 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 More than UN. UN conference. Every day UN conference. Their home is like Gaza Strip. Yes. Israelis and Hamas people always <laughs> missiles are flying always. Yeah, if it's not worse, it's plate. If it's not plate, it's spoon. If it's not spoon, it's knife. Hey! But their marriage was the type that was very, very awanistic. Very happy, very nice, always together, smiling, laughing. Qua, 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 qua. When he died, she was very broken. My pastor said to her one day, give me your ring. I know you are broken, you are sad, and we are not even able to, but give me your ring. He told her that the marriage is over. The marriage with this boy is over. It was a face. Now he's gone. Now a new face. You can't keep on getting married to the guy who is dead. You can't follow a dead person. That's why when you follow a religion, whose leader and whose uh, whatever is dead is unfortunate because why are you following a dead person? But as for my Jesus, as for this my Jesus, he is still alive and, and an empty grave is there to prove that my Savior is alive. It's a, it's a known, well-known historic fact that Jesus rose from the dead. Yeah. And that makes a lot of difference. 
that makes a lot of difference. That makes a lot of difference. Jesus is still alive. We serve a risen Savior. We serve a risen Savior. We serve a living Savior. He is still alive today. He is not dead. He is alive. Therefore, what he did yesterday, he will do today. And he will continue to do it tomorrow. Clap for my Jesus. Clap for my Jesus. Clap for my Jesus. Oh, Jesus. In Acts chapter 2, verse 22, he says, Fellow Israel, Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man, I'm reading from the New International Version. He was a man who had God's approval. God did miracles, wonders, and signs among you through Jesus. You yourself know this. Long ago, God planned that Jesus would be handed over to you. With the help of evil people, you put Jesus to death. You nailed him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead. He set him free from the suffering of death. It was not possible for death to keep its hold on Jesus. It was not possible. It was not possible. It was not possible. It was not possible. It was not possible for death, for the grave to keep him still and keep him in holding him. It was not possible for death, for death could not hold him captive. Even in the grave, he is Lord. Oh, for death could not hold him captive. Even in the grave, he is Lord. I declare for death could not, I serve a risen Savior. I serve a living even Savior. In even in the grave, He is still the he Lord. He is still Lord. the champion. Oh, yes. For, For death could not hold Him captive. Even, even in the, the grave, He is Lord. Jesus, finally, Jesus will use resurrection power to raise you from the dead. And take you to heaven. Yes, he will use resurrection power to take you to heaven. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoso liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. This resurrection power is still alive today. One day, when you are in your... That's why the grave is not the end for the believer. The grave is not the end. The grave is not the end. I'm sorry if somebody in your life dies who is not a believer. I'm sorry. That, that may be the end. You may never see the person again. An old lady was dying. She called her children, her sons, that, uh, I think mainly boys. And when they came, he said to this one, good night. He said to this one, good night. Said to this one, good night. To the last one, he said, goodbye. And the boy said, why? Why do you say good night to this one? Good night to this one. Good night to this one. But to me, you say goodbye. He said, because all our lives, you've turned your back on God. You don't want to go to church. You have thrown God away. You don't want, we have devotion. You don't attend. You, have, you don't read your Bible. You say, away with this Jesus. We make too much noise about Jesus. So as I'm dying, I say good night because I'll meet him in the morning on resurrection morning. And I'll meet this one resurrection morning. I'll meet this one resurrection morning. But as for you, I'm not sure we'll ever meet. So goodbye. The boy cried. That was the day he turned around. So today, may you turn around. I said, may you turn around. Before it is said to you, goodbye. Because you may never meet the person again. But Jesus will use resurrection power to raise us up. Oh yes. My mother died but she's still alive. 
I believe that I'll see her again. Oh yes, I'll see her again. My friend, Bishop Saki's wife, Juanita Saki, she died. I'll see her again. One day, I'll see her again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are so many people who have gone ahead. Major Melfu went ahead of us, but I'll see him again. There are several people. Lady Pastor Marian, a dear, lovely lady who was here with us. She died. She's gone to be with the Lord. You see, there are some of us who will have to lay down our lives. Yet we all shall live again on the other side. One day on the other side, we will live again. It's not going to be over. It's not over because of resurrection power. And that's why the Bible says that, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. It's not in vain, brother. Because of resurrection power, you will live again. It will never be over. One day when this life is over, watch me carefully. You will see me singing with David. David one was my favorite people in the Bible. I'm going to be looking for him when I get to that side. I said, brother David, I enjoyed your psalms. And then I'll sing a song I knew whilst I was here. Using his psalm, thou, O oh Lord, are a shield about me. You're my glory. You're the lifter of my head. I will extol thee, my God, O oh King. I will bless your name forever. I said, that's how we used to sing this your psalm. How do you sing it yourself? <laughs> with your harp. The sons of Asaph will be there. We will tell them, this your, your nice song was very nice. As the deer parted for the water so my soul longeth after thee. Oh, you alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. You alone, you alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone, may my spirit we will live again, oh, you. Hello, all my heart, desire, and I long to worship you. Beautiful. That's why we look forward to that resurrection day. Because a day will come when the dead in Christ shall rise. They will rise. Because Jesus rose again, you will rise again. That's why you have to force that your brothers are born again. You have to force that your colleagues are born again. You have to force that your neighbors are born again. Because that neighbor you like, if the person is not born again, eh, I tell you that when you, you go to the person's uh, funeral, you know that that's the end. The body you see will be the last time you ever see that person at close range. The next time you lift your head, when you are, if, if you successfully make it to heaven, you will see him on the other side. Whilst you are in Abraham's bosom, he will be in the lake of fire and he will be there in that place where he's tormented. And then he will be saying, Hey! Hey! Ah! Is that you? Jack! Jack! Oh! Oh! Look at you! Oh! You didn't tell me! He said, Oh, but I used to go to you. But you never told me. Yeah, but I, I remember inviting you for, but yeah, but, but you never said it in a way that I could believe it. Your brother sleeps with you in the same room. He's not born again. You will not pray for his salvation. You will not fast for his salvation. And now you say that, well, if he wants to go to hell, he can go to hell. But the day you see your brother in the place of torment and you are in Abraham's bosom comforted, I tell you that day, you, 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 you regret it. I have a dear uncle. When I was growing, we we're growing up. He's, he's older maybe by some 10 years. And he was into drugs, weed, smoking, everything. 
causing confusion. If there's a festival, everybody gathers. Power means you cause a fight. Power means, I mean, he will do something, something crazy. Oh, I used to be bedding, but his room was stinking. Bed sheets are never washed. Beddings are never changed. He just lies in it. Sometimes he comes, he throws up. He's just, oh, the room was bizarre. One day I went to lie on the bed. And I cried to God, Father, my uncle, save his soul. Save him, Lord, save him. Change his life, Lord. I pray, I beg you. I can't go to heaven and see my uncle go to hell. I pray, Lord, as I lie on this bed, when he comes to lie here, let conviction enter his heart. Let conviction enter him. Let him be transformed by supernatural power. Oh, I used to pray several days on that bed. I lie on that bed. Years after I left the house, I went, never really were in touch. But one day I met him. He said, I've given my life to Christ. Born again. He knew that I was a pastor. So he said, what church do I go to? I said, oh, I go to. And the whole house, they go to Presby. But I said, I go to Light Town. He said, oh, where is it? I said, oh, North Kaneshi. He came to North Kaneshi. Became an usher. Up to today, he's still an usher there. He's still an usher there. He's way in his 70s. He's in the hymns choir. Bishop, so you know him. He's in the hymns choir. He sings in the hymns choir. You will never, t- he, he, even he has a limp. He came to Bible school for two years. He has a limp that came from being knocked down by a car into a gutter. And they came to announce to us that your uncle is in some guy being knocked down by a car. We had to carry him. He was in POP for months. But I'm glad. I'm glad that he has given his life to Jesus. Up till today, he calls me every month at least. I'll hear from him once. And we are still flowing. I'm, I'm grateful. What about your brother? What about your sister? You, are not, you don't care. It's time for evangelism. You run away. When you know that we are going to preach to people, you will say, you give yourself an excuse so that this particular activity, you never do it. But you see, the rich man who went to hell, when he saw Lazarus whom he knew on earth, he shouted to Lazarus that, please, bring water and touch my tongue and cool my tongue. Abraham said that this man cannot cross to where you are because it's very vast. I don't know what the distance is. I don't know what the distance is, but the Bible says there's a great gulf fixed so that those who want to pass from Abraham's bosom to where you are being tormented cannot. Neither can they cross from where you are to where we are. Then the man said that, I have five brothers on earth. How they are living, they will come to where I am. How their lives are, they will come to where I am. So send this Lazarus to go back to earth. When he goes to earth, they will say, ah, this is the man who died. Is that not Lazarus who died? How come he's walking here? And he will say, oh, I died by your, uh, your brother. Sent me from made Abraham send me from, uh, from his bosom, Abraham's bosom or heaven. I don't know whether it's heaven or Abraham's bosom. It's somewhere heaven. Somewhere in heaven. And he said, I should come and tell you people that you shouldn't come to where he is. And the man, the, the Abraham said to them, no. If somebody rises from the dead and goes to earth to go and talk to your brothers, they will not receive. If they don't receive from people like me and people like you, they can never receive from somebody. And we know. Somebody said he died. He's telling his story. He had a, this thing. He went to hell. He's coming. Nobody believes it. I mean, when you, when you hear something, do you even believe it? Do you believe it? Say, ah, he didn't really die. I mean, the thing is a type of vision or dream that he has seen and he's coming to frighten all of us. These people who frighten all of us, it's not good. Don't frighten us. We want to frighten us to heaven. We don't like such things. We want to leave us to just be, oh. It's better to be frightened to heaven though, than to be pampered to hell. That the church is asleep. Believers are asleep. Most of us don't think about the person we interact with, whether he's saved or not. Whether he's born again or not. Whether he will go to heaven or not. We don't really care. Or maybe you don't believe that a day is coming when the dead in Christ shall rise. 
And those who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them and be with the Lord in the air when he returns. There's a day coming, I'm telling you. This resurrection is not just a celebration to wear white. It is a reminder that there is coming a day of resurrection for all dead people. All dead people are still alive and one day we will come to a place where we are judged for with our final judgment. And we must rise up as believers and start making a difference in our world with the gospel of salvation. You have to, to, to develop your ability to preach the gospel and convince people to give their life to Christ. Convince people. When there's a fire in the house, you are not going to calmly say that, oh, you know, I saw some flames, you know, coming from downstairs. It, it, it felt quite dangerous, you know, but it's a type of fire that can consume the whole house. And people who are in the house should probably go out. Hey! Then somebody asked that, fire where? So, downstairs. Uh, in this house, uh, yes. Ah. It's like a big fire, yes. Ah. But why are you saying it calmly like that? Oh, I'm just explaining the situation how it is. So that, you know, you can advise yourself. Is that how you are going to announce it? That's why some, some of us preach the gospel. We preach the gospel as though it's not really, it's not really serious. Yeah, it's not really serious. Then you are, there, there's no animation. You are not, you are not hysterical. You are not strong. You are not on fire. It's time for you to say, brother, what are you doing? You won't go to church. You do you know what it means. Do you know what it means? Do you know why I'm speaking the way I'm speaking? Come on, I hear and I see my bishop preaching at the crusade. I can see that. He has seen something that he is explaining to us because it's like the eyes are red and the arms are all over the place and the body is vibrating as he's talking. Look at my hand. Look at my hand. Look at one day, this hand, this hand, you'll be reminded of this hand that it was lifted and it was, it was warning you and it was, it was inviting you. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. And today I'm also lifting my hand. To believers and I'm saying come to Jesus believe in the resurrection take up the message the Bible says that with great power they gave witness of the resurrection with great power they gave witness they talked about the resurrection they made people understand that Jesus rose to the point where they beat them and we take our message and it, it means nothing it's like now the, our message is just flyers that we just hang around the whole. just take just take just take just take just, just, just take but it's time for us to rise up with fire in our hearts, with fire in our eyes, with strength in our voices and decree that Jesus came to this world to save sinners. Jesus came to save sinners. Let us run to save our lives. Clap for Jesus and stand to your feet. Ah, barato simaha. Meka fatari amahaza. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes. Yes. Pray right now. Pray. Marato shikaya badanda lama. Riako si mahabada si fanda la marota sikia. Jele merota samahanda la makoria bazibedele mala. Reko sapataya gada. Oh, yes. To preach Christ. To go somewhere. Preach somewhere. To win a soul, to convince a friend, convince a colleague, convince a neighbor, convince a relative, convince my sibling, Honda Barata Sende, convince an uncle, convince an auntie, Abeo Tafile Haradisio Kashila Mara, Reto Samia Mahandala Manala, Reto Sayandele Manarala Masayala, Reko Sayaba Le Roma Handini Migava, Mepato Sia Mahanda, Liko Raba Shike, Lima Raba, Rima Lama, Indelebe Suria Mahanda Laga. Reto shikala badaria ba zata fale moranike abahala mara. Blessed be God, O Shandalama. We give you praise, Father. We thank you for your blessing, the blessing of your word that is alive, the blessing of your word that ministers to us and turns our hearts towards our God. 
Oh yes. Thank you for resurrection power that is still at work in believers today. May we all experience resurrection in different areas of our lives. In the name of Jesus. Let marriages resurrect. Let businesses resurrect. Let brains resurrect. Let people that have organs that are dying have a resurrection power experience in every organ in Jesus' name. Thank you. Any decomposing situation, let it be reversed in the name of Jesus. We thank you, mighty God, that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we think or even ask in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. Amen. Amen and amen and amen and amen and amen and amen and amen. Amen and amen and amen and amen and amen and amen. As every head is bowed, if you are here today, you don't know Jesus as your personal savior. This is Easter morning, Easter Sunday morning. And right here, Jesus died. Jesus was buried. Jesus rose again from the dead for you and for me. And because of him, we too can have salvation and resurrection in the name of Jesus. If you are here today, you want to be born again, you want to give your life to Jesus, wherever you are, please lift up your right hand in the air so I can pray for you. Anybody here like that? Anybody here like that? You want to, somebody invited you, pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be a serious Christian. I've been joking with this thing, but today on Resurrection Sunday morning, I want to give my life to Jesus. If you are here like that, lift up your right hand in the air. Lift it up higher so I can see you. Anybody here like that? Anybody here? God bless you. Anybody here? Anybody here? If you have lifted your hand, come to me right in front here so I can pray for you. Come, come quickly. Come quickly, please. Come quickly. Yes. I'm a Christian, but I want to rededicate my life. Come to me. Anybody here like that? Anybody here like that? Clap for them, they are coming. Clap for them, they are coming. God bless you. God bless you. Listen, you are a believer, but you can say that, look, I can feel that I'm quite far. But today, I want to rededicate my life. And I want to start afresh. If you are here like that as I'm praying, come and pray with us and God will bless your life. Say after me, Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. Lift your two hands and say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I come to you just as I am. Please forgive me for all my sins and wash me with your precious blood. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. From today, I will serve Jesus. I will follow Jesus for the rest of my days. Thank you, Father, for saving my soul. I give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Follow Pastor Michael.